So uh, <laughs> I'll be sitting, you know, on the toilet with my phone watching a trailer and my wife from the other room is like, you okay in there? I'm just like, yeah, I'm just watching a trailer. It's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding, man. It's, it's, it's a goofy thing, but I'm a little kid when it comes to things I'm excited about. Even though I'm a full on adult. It's happening. Guys! What's going on? What's going on? Hi! Entertain the geeky. <laughs> okay, so we, we, we missed last week. Just a bunch of life happened and all that. Yeah, adulting is hard. It's so stupid. I hate adulting. Well, I could go back to being a teenager. That I, was the best times. I'm gracious about parts of it. Like, there's some adulting that just kicks ass where it's like, yeah, at any point in time, I can do whatever I want. And I have adult money now that I did not have as a teenager. That's true. That's true. Like, that's a win. Yeah. You want to buy something? All right, you buy shit. Can't yeah, I mean, really- that's the problem I always have around, like, Christmases and birthdays. And people say, what do you want? I'm just like, nothing. I When I, when I want something, I just buy it. I got I'm, it for I'm myself already. Yeah. yeah. I'm an adult. I don't wait around for Christmas to give you a big list of all the things I want for well, the whole year. There's, there's certain <laughs> things that I'm so weird about buying. Uh, so like I have to, I have to get a new, uh, light for our setup here and I'm so fucking turned off by the idea of spending money on this light, (laughs) even though it's for production value. (laughs) Right. And then, uh, the, uh, foam that I have on the walls, this is another thing. So I didn't want to buy foam to begin with, but it started yellowing. Oh, sure. If you look at the gray and it was like, foam don't last forever. It was like overnight though. I was pissed because I'm like, man, I just bought this shit, (laughs) bought it, put it on the walls. There's an adhesive there. So like, it's a pain in the ass to get off. So now I'm looking at, uh, different materials to put on the wall there. Okay. Cause I'm like, I I like the setup, but man, I don't, I don't want to spend money on it. Like, (laughs) so I'm like, should I wait until birthday or Christmas and be like, will you get me foam? Yeah. Will you just buy me (laughs) gift cards to places that sell the stuff I need? (laughs) That's usually, yeah, that's usually if you find some kind of project, that's what you would ask for as an adult if someone asks you, hey, what do you want for Christmas? A gift card to Home Depot so I can finish building that thing I started building a year ago and never finished building. Uh, Fucking, what was, (laughs) one of the things that we asked for was uh, Tupperware. Sure. Because I've always bought the disposable stuff since I've been like a grown up. I'm like, I'll just get the disposable Tupperware because if friends come over and I. Wait, then what's the point of Tupperware? So it. It's good. You can wash it. You can use it as much as you want, but it's a little bit cheaper, a little bit thinner. So, like, if you lose it or if you fucking screw it up in the microwave or something. Oh, yeah. Or you leave it in the fridge too long and it goes bad. Right. Then you'd feel less bad getting rid of it. Or, like, if Thanksgiving is here and you're sending people off with food because, like, I do Thanksgiving here now. Sure. I'm like, all right, well, you know, take food, everybody. Yeah. Um, and I don't feel bad about missing out on that Tupperware. But if I, if it was like, you know, a hundred dollar set of pampered chef, I'd be like, man, I, look, I'm going to need this back. <laughs> <laughs> I usually feel pretty bad about putting more plastic into landfills. Cause that stuff's going to be there for hundreds of years. Uh, no, we recycle the shit out of that. Like, we're lucky here in St. Louis County because recycling is included in a lot of our uh, trash services. Yeah, I mean, we I think we pay a little extra for the recycling, but we don't use it anymore because one day I was outside having a smoke on garbage day and I had my garbage can and my recycling can and the garbage truck came by and picked them both up and dumped them both into the Those same fucks. truck. And I was just like. So it's not recycled. That then? shit would never fly here. So like we, yeah, have, like we have two just... different trucks at two different times here in my neighborhood. Okay. Uh, but my neighbors are kind of hoity toity sometimes with shit yeah. like that. So they'd be like, no, you can't, uh, we're calling the police, <laughs> you know? So like one of those ridiculous nine one one calls, ah, the trash man, the trash man. They'll be like, is the trash man hurting you? No. Did he hurt somebody? No, he's, he put the recycling in it. <laughs> Put the trash and the recycling in the same truck. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean I, I would I would try to recycle and and I like the idea of it, but look, at the end of the day, and this is a little weirdly off topic, it's but, super off, but at the end of the day, <laughs> since we started putting the onus of recycling on the consumer, which it's not our fault that there's all this extra plastic, it's soda bottle makers and you know. Right bag makers it's they they've caused a big problem and they put it on us to make us feel like we're responsible for it 
But even since we started doing that, which happened in our lifetimes, right? Like happened when we were young, when we first started really putting, uh, we're, we're going to separate out the trash from the recyclable trash and we're going to put it in a different trash can. I and mean, we're going to have a green one for the recycling and a blue one for the trash. I, I, I think it is up to the individual to an extent. I do think, I do think if you're, if you're producing products and or services, yeah. and let's say you're a multi-billion dollar organization, we'll use Gatorade as an example here. Sure. Um, I do drink a lot of Gatorade. Is, yeah. there, is there a reason why they couldn't use something that was a little more eco-friendly and it, like a biodegradable plastic? Right. It should be on, the onus should be on them to fix this problem. Because since we've started doing recycling, I, I heard somebody talking about this at one point. Uh, I've, we've only recycled like 10% of the things we intend to recycle. Huh. So it's not working, right? It's not actually a measure that's protecting anyone or saving anyone. It's just a bunch of nonsense. And it should be on the companies that produce these kind of products to find better ways to produce their products. I yeah. mean, I don't just, I, I feel like we should go back to glass bottles anyway. Yeah, I mean. It's more of a pleasurable experience and you could turn them in. I, I, yeah, exactly. When our parents were kids, that's what you did. You yeah, got a you, bottle of you Pepsi. You collected a bunch of bottles mm -hmm. and, and, you, you, and you said, I'm getting five cents for each bottle and I need $10 for this concert. So I need, <laughs> you know, this many bottles to get my $10. Well, I mean, no, no, no. Even, even with that. <clears throat> so like if you got soda, it came in a glass bottle back then. Oh, yeah. And you would, you were... I guess, yeah, you might have got five cents off your next Pepsi that you bought or whatever when you turned no, like, in at the grocery store. No, you could actually, like, take those – you can still do that. You can take glass bottles to uh -huh. a recycling center and here, and they'll give you some cash. Right. Yeah, like, you can still do that. It says it usually on the glass well, bottle. How, mu how much easier of a process – because isn't, isn't glass from sand – uh, yes. So how much easier of a process is it to just melt down your existing glass versus having to refine it from a raw material? I'm well, sure, sure it's yeah. much easier. Of course. Yeah. Uh, and less labor intensive and all that. So it makes more sense. Like, right. why don't, why don't we do more glass bottles? I don't know. That's yeah. not our thing on the show here. So sorry guys. No, yeah, that's not, it's just a kind of a tangent. I think you, you, you got me into. Sorry. That's I, okay. I didn't mean it. What are we talking about? We're, so, <laughs> we're talking about stuff? We're yeah, yeah. Nerdy this, stuff? Th this week, we're talking about the shit that we've been up to, the things that we've been engaging with. And okay. uh, so we have our bonus content picked out, and I'm not going to spoil it just yet. Yeah, you got to wait. You gotta, uh, it's bonus content. But, you got to uh, wait for that. So what, what have you been up to these past two weeks here? Because it's, it's been a moment. Uh, yeah, so um, – I am currently rereading the Homeland trilogy of Forgotten Realms D&D mm -hmm. &D novels uh, because they did these like 25th anniversary, like complete editions that have all three books in the series in one big book. And I was uh, down at a different store working one day and they had it on their shelf and I was like, oh, I'm taking this. This is mine now. <laughs> and then I, when I got back to my store, I ordered all the other, the other three. Nice. Because you know, they're like 20 bucks a pop and it's, Three, four books uh, in one. Fuck, I need to get those. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're the first one, I'm having a hard time getting back in, but two, three, and four, I can get it. And that's the, it's the whole original series of books. It was like, it was four, seven, ten, thirteen books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thirteen books in the original series. Um, but yeah, so I've been rereading that, and uh, I flew through the first one, uh, Homeland. That book is so good. It's just, it, it's... Really, it was really my first when I was young. It was really my first window into Drow society. Uh, okay, dark elf. <laughs> if you're unfamiliar out there, um, and their society is just nuts. Like the whole, you know, inviting treachery, and if you can cleanly kill someone, you just get away with it. No one cares. They, in fact, they applaud it. You know what I mean? You can. You can just destroy another house in the hierarchy, which is how the book opens. And as long as you kill everyone that could point the finger of you at you of noble birth, it's they just pretend it never happened. Like you know, what are you talking about? That house never existed. It was always this house. <laughs> Sounds like existed. corporate America. <laughs> yeah. I mean it's 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 a it's a you know, it's an Ouroboros, right? It's a yeah. snake that's eating its own tail. Right. Uh and the opening chapter, when they're making war on this house, the two noble brothers of this house are there. Nalfine, he's the elder boy of the house, and Dinan, he's the second boy of the house. And they're kind of wandering through after the initial 
wave and they're kind of just mopping up things and looking for anybody that's left alive. And at one point, Dinan just says, what was that? And Nalfine, who's a, a mage, he kind of points his little staff like, what's up? And he gets stabbed in the back. Oh, man. And Dinan leans, leans in real close to him, close to his ear and says, uh, now I am the elder boy of the house and now fiend be damned. And so like right away, it's like, oh, this place is brutal. Like, and he's not punished for that. It's, it's, that's, I mean, one of the things, one of the quotes from the book that I love is, uh, those most noble in our city spend their lives watching over their backs for the knives that would find them. Their deaths usually come from the front. Now that's a roundabout way of saying the mo the people you have to fear the most are the people that are close to you, that right. have the most to gain from your death. Yeah. Keep your friends close, enemies closer yeah, kind exactly. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so like right away, I mean, it just gives me chills just talking about it. Right. Like right away, you're just like, what is this place? And then as, Drist is born, the young dark elf, the baby that's born that night. He was to be sacrificed, actually. That's another thing that happens that's crazy. They oh, sacrifice their third born son to Lolf. It's part of their, their life, their, their, their religion, yeah. yeah. Uh, but after Nalfine got killed, they were about to stab the baby, and the, the, the priestess, the sister that was connected to Nalfine, felt his death. And she's like, oh, not a third son. And she went, whoa, stop. And she was like, what? We have to sacrifice the child for our victory to be complete. And she goes, he's not the third born child. He is the second boy of the house. Oh, wow. And her sisters all confirm this, right? Because they're all psychically linked to mm -hmm. various people that have been out hunting. And he lives. So he was to be sacrificed on the day of his birth. Jesus. It's only Dinan's betrayal of Nalfine. That saved him? That saved his life. Holy yeah. cow. And trust me when I say, he did not do that to save his life. Right, right. He did that to better his station in their house hierarchy. Uh, because Drow society is also matriarchal. Mm -hmm. So the men are left to fight amongst themselves. The women don't even really care what the men do. Right. Right? Uh, unless that's that thing is disrespecting the women <laughs> or, uh, you know, disrespecting the religion right, or, or dishonoring speaking the out name. of turn. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. That's intense. Yeah. So I flew through that first book. The first book is Driss growing up and him, uh, going to, going off to the Academy, becoming a fighter, becoming the most skilled fighter in, in his entire society. Really. I mean, that's how they describe him in the book. Um, and then, seeing what his society really is and realizing he wants no part of it at all. And instead of just being trapped in an endless cycle of violence, he decides to leave. Becomes an adventurer. And go out into the Underdark, which is not a place to start an adventure if you've ever started an adventure there. The Underdark is a crazy, dangerous place, and he's all alone, save for the magical panther that he carries with him. He's got this little statue, this mm -hmm, little onyx mm -hmm, statue of a panther that he can summon from the astral. Come, planet. Tigro. Yeah, Guinevar. Guinevar is the name of the Tigro is just what I was calling. <laughs> so that's that's one nerdy thing I've been up to. But what about you? So I actually, funny enough that you mentioned that because I I love the lit RPG thing, um, and I just finished uh, He Who Fights with Monsters eight. Nice. I don't know if you've got into that series at no, all. No, I haven't. It's fucking incredible. But um, it, I don't read these books. I listen to them audio, and on audio form. Sure. And uh, the guy that does it, Sherta Loon, is the author. I forget the gentleman's name who actually narrates it, but he's Australian. Okay. It works out splendidly because the main character is a Japanese guy that was raised in Australia. Uh, well, plus, you got those soothing Australian tones. Oh, and everything, and yeah. everything. <laughs> so it, it's it's interesting because in the series, um, this guy basically wakes up in another world, sure, uh, naked, bald, and it's because he died. And there's something called the World Phoenix that gave him a, a rebirth in a completely different universe, more or less. So he uh, he wakes up in this like have to read that. high that sounds interesting. fantasy magic world yeah. where he has to he, his initial um, his initial interactions with other people in this world are them trying to sacrifice him 
Okay. So they're getting ready to kill him, and this group of adventurers is also captured, and he does this thing where he sets them free somehow, and they're like, they're like, there's no reason that you, you, because you're a bitch, should have been able to rescue us, and there was no reason for you to even do it just because we don't know each other. And he's like, no, he's like, you gotta, you gotta look out for people. And that's like the main character's whole thing through this whole series is no, I got to look out for people that can't look out for themselves. Okay. And they describe him as Batman esque at, at certain points in the story. Sure. Uh, but oh my God. So he ends up getting into it with this, they call it an astral being. And it's a, it's, it's a God more or less. Sure. And these beings are technically more powerful than gods in most circumstances. They're the ones that deal with basically shaping, shaping the universe. Oh, the primordial forces. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the world Phoenix is one and the builder is another. Well, you learn over the course of the story that the builder was once a mortal and the builder has this just total hard on for the main character, Jason. His name's Jason Asano. Even more reason for you to read. Weird. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there's this <laughs> friction all the time, and um, Jason goes as far as to like spit in this astral being's face, talk to him like he's a peer, and people are like, "You don't talk to astral beings like you're their peer. You're not even diamond rank. Sure. You're a boy." You know. <laughs> and he's like, "He's like, no, that's not how shit works on Earth." He's like, "Anybody can talk to anybody anyway. Sure. Uh, it doesn't matter what your status is." So. Just just finished book eight of that. Book nine comes out in a couple of days here, so I wanted to uh, make sure okay. I was there. Yeah, yeah, you want uh, to reread that last one to get I didn't even back. reread it, so I was just oh, behind. You're I, to it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I took a few months off because I was like, man, all I'm doing is listening to this series. I need to like fucking go live life a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and I've, I've had, you know, if, you, if you've got downtime doing whatever, you can listen to an audiobook. So I'd just fucking yeah. pop a headphone in and be like, all right, here we go. Right. And, uh, Oh my God, the friendship stuff that they did in this series. Um, so these adventurers that he rescues early on, he becomes very good friends with them. And this is all sounding very like eighties D and D cartoon too. Totally is eighties right? D and D cartoon. Like, where he like the one kid gets or the kids get like sucked into the fantasy world, and the quest is they're trying to find a way home. Oh yeah, like oh yeah, <laughs> this is very eighties D and D cartoon. It's so fucking good though, <laughs> and it's a grown up. He's a full blown grown up. Well, so. sure, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they were but, kids in the old cartoon, right? Um, but yeah, it, so I've been I've been just sucked way into that. And then I found out uh, over the past couple of weeks here that Dungeon Crawler Carl, another series that I'm absolutely in love with, is about to get its, I think it's the seventh seventh or eighth book, something like that. I don't know. Nice. Uh, yeah, seventh book. Um, and I'm just like, fuck. So they, they released the uh, Audible version so you can read it. Um, I will only listen to this series. Jeff Hayes, the guy that narrates it, yeah. is freaking insane. Sure. Uh, so it's like it's like listening to a movie, basically. And this guy does every voice and all. Oh, my yeah. God. I mean, I get that. I think the, the problem I've always had with audiobooks because I've listened to books before. But the problem I always get into is. I, when I'm listening to someone read the story to me, I'm getting their affectation and their uh, context. I like holding a book in my hand and reading it myself because I want to create that. Right. Like. Sure. I want to see between the lines. I want to create the mental picture. seems like when I'm listening to someone else because of connotation and syntax and, sure. and how, you know, dialogue lines are delivered and stuff, you're interpreting the intensity or lack thereof within this particular right, but, moment. But you watch a movie. Yeah, but that's that's why books are different, right? Like, I guess I guess because like that I, gives you the reader the option of you're how the, you're it's the painted. director yeah, at that point. How in time. that mental picture is painted comes down to you. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree with that, but it's it's lovely to hear somebody's interpretation of it. I guess it's sure. it's fun, it's enjoyable, and it gives you the opportunity again to if I'm trying to do something else, if I'm reading something, I have to sit there and read it. I can't be doing shit on top of that. Right. Uh, yeah. I lack whatever mental wherewithal it takes to do that. <laughs> um, and I think anybody that's reading something with any kind of, uh, you know, intensity or anything like that would be in the same boat. You yeah. can't, you can't do dishes and read a book. Well, no, of course, you know, not. Yeah. so it's nice to be able to do that with an audiobook. Yeah. And most of the time, if I've ever, if I've done audiobooks, it's of things I've read. Okay. And already, and it's like, yeah, I would love to hear this story again, but maybe I'll let Patrick Stewart tell it to me today. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. 
<laughs> You're a good man, sir. <laughs> he is a great man. He's also a sir. I know. He is knighted. That's why I said sir. Yeah. Sir Patrick cool. Stewart. I need to go to England so I can get knighted. I don't think you can just go get knighted. I think there has to be a purpose for your knighting. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll give him a reason. Oh, yeah? I'll what be you, like, you, you fucking do? do this now. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm an American. <laughs> and they'll be like, that's the Instant problem. Instant gratification <laughs> is my thing. <laughs> don't shame me for that. I'm going to use my credit card to do this, too. <laughs> Well, that's interesting that we're both absorbed in book series. That's interesting. I, I did not expect that. Oh, dude. <laughs> I'm so, well, I never would have given it a shot. Never would have given it a shot. But uh, one of my childhood best friends was like, you have to listen to this series, this series, and this series. And I was like, look, man, I appreciate what you're saying here. I have so many irons and so many fires right now that I'm not even going to begin to try to fuck with that. And he's like, just listen to it while you're doing shit, asshole. Sure. And I was like, all right, fine. So he got me started with Dungeon Crawler Carl. And if you've not done a lit RPG audiobook, Dungeon Crawler Carl is for sure the place to start. Fucking incredible. Um, Jeff Hayes, amazing uh, narrator. Matt Denneman, the writer, brilliant. I've tried to get both of them on the show. Yeah. Uh, I had more luck with Jeff Hayes than Matt Deniman. Matt Deniman's very busy. He plays in a band. He's doing all these audio books. Sure. Um, I actually got to talk to Jeff Hayes' people, and they were talking about, they were like, all right, you know, we would we would like to work with you in some capacity. We just don't know what that is yet. Okay. And then they ghosted me. Sure. Dicks. Yeah. Um, no, they're fine. It happens. They're it's busy. The internet. Dude, they're, they're busy. We're not, we're not big enough for people to pay attention to right. like that yet. So right. Well, there's. I mean, maybe one day we'll have that kind they, of. Pull. They they took the time to have a half hour video call with me, which I appreciated. Sure. You know, so like I would love to be able to reach out to you know people like Salvatore and just say, hey, do you want to come talk about the new novel you just released? Right. And they say, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you want to jump on Zoom, buddy? And you're yeah. like, yes, I do. <laughs> Zoom me. <laughs> maybe one day. Maybe one day we'll have that kind of pull. Oh, we will. We will. We we may. I think it's about the pull that you assume. That's the, that's the funniest thing about doing this. Um, I did like, get Scott Snyder to retweet me that one time. Right. And like we've had things like that a few times. And like people yeah. have been like, yeah, we'll fucking we'll chat with you a little bit or whatever. Sure. And it's cool. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> We're so terrible. We don't know why anybody would want to talk to us. <laughs> Well, I think I think if like uh, I think if anybody listens to the show, I think they know that we we care about the hobby and the culture. And oh, all we do. That. We and definitely do. I think that's one of the things that'll that's our like in. Yeah, I think I think the problem I have had uh, that I used to have when talking about this thing or that thing is I'm always just really excited You're about a fan. everything. Yeah, and I think that kind of can come off as boring, right? Like, because a lot of things I think that people want to see is dissent. People want to hear that you didn't like that thing. I don't know why that is. It bothers me because I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear why you didn't like that thing. I want to hear why you liked it, you know? I mean, if it, so if there are glaring problems with something, I, I think it's we something. We can have, I mean, we've yeah, had we, honest conversations yeah, we on should the have, show about we should have conversation. glaring problems. Right, but, but for the most part, like... <laughs> It's okay to fucking like it. And it's yeah. okay to like it for what it is. Well, yeah. And and that but that's what I don't understand. I mean, I talked about that when we when we were talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Mm-hmm. I talked about that like uh, this thing I'm seeing where people are just down on everything Marvel's doing right now. And is it all perfect? No. But it's never all been perfect. Right. You know what I mean? Like we had a couple of monster smash successes and everyone just remembers everything about those first three phases as a monster smash success when that was not the case. No. There was a there was a lot of misses before we got to some good hits. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. So I just don't yeah, I just don't understand why the popular stance right now is to hate on it. Be- I th- <laughs> Well, I, I think it's be, like with Marvel in particular, I, I have a, a Scott Snyder thing too, so I'll come back to that. But with Marvel in particular, um, I think that it is so mainstream now yeah. that it's cool to not like it. It's cool to go against the grain. And I think that's what a lot of people are doing because Ant-Man and the Wasp was a fucking kick-ass It was a good flick. movie. It was a I, kick-ass why didn't flick, like that movie? Dude. I loved that movie. Um, 
Legend of the Five Rings. That was a kick-ass flick, dude. That was a awesome. badass kung fu yeah. just thriller. It had Tony Leung in it. What more right. do you people want? Badass fucking movie. Uh, multi- He's one of the number one celebrities in China. Like, what more do you people want? <laughs> uh, Multiverse of Madness was a fucking... That was a cool movie. You did need some background to well, yeah, get into it. you had to it, watch but, WandaVision. But it was a cool-ass movie, man. Yeah. Um, and, like... The recent Marvel movies, I've been very taken back by. I'm like, man, these are fucking cool. I'm super ready for Guardians of the Galaxy, man. Oh, dude, super anything ready. that James Gunn touches, I'm super good with. Super ready for that. I can't wait for that. That I I remember when I started at the shop, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy had just come out, and you had a you had that thing playing on the TV. 24 7 at the fantasy when the shop. trailer when the first trailer dropped every single person that walked in the door i was like Did you see the trailer oh, come here i got it queued up get over here we're gonna watch it right now i think we watched the first day that trailer went up i think we watched it over a hundred times <laughs> just from different people coming in and out of the store because that trailer dropped on a tuesday and wednesday is the day New when i would thing. see yeah. all my nerds you right. know all my nerd friends and yeah, I think we watched that trailer like a hundred times. You're like, come here. My coworkers were tired of it. Sit, like, sit on Papa's lap. We're gonna watch this together. <laughs> and and I remember when Colonius came into the store. One of the things he said was, "See, this is where they're gonna fail. No one gives a shit about these characters like I do, but the mainstream audience." And how wrong we were. Oh my god. <laughs> well, that was so. At that point in time, that was the breath of fresh air for superhero movies. Um, yeah, but it wasn't anything different. It was just Space Avengers. Right, but it, was, it wasn't it was characters that we've been seeing all the time every day for the last 50 years. Okay, first of all, we're only, we're only just past phase one at that point, right? Guardians of the Galaxy mm-hmm. came out prior to Avengers Age of Ultron. Yes. But also, look, while I, I get what you're saying, the characters are different, the archetypes that those characters fill are exactly the same. Right, right. Star-Lord is Captain America. He's the man that comes from a different time right? and doesn't fully get your new-fangled future he's, ideologies. He's not the Boy Scout that we have with Captain America or well, Superman. Hold on, hold on. I'm okay, not okay, done, shoot, right? shoot, shoot. Tony is Rocket. Okay. They're both drunks who quip and are smart asses to everyone else around them for no other reason other than they kind of like being smart asses. Gamora is obviously Black Widow. They're both super stealthy trained assassins and they're going to go in and they're going to kick your ass and you're not even going to know they were there, right? Uh, Groot is Hulk. He's the big strong guy. Okay. And Drax is Thor. He's kind of a dumb guy, but he's super strong. He may be a god, right? Like, it's just Space Avengers. Yes, are the characters not the same people? Sure, but they fit the same archetypes so that the movie hits the same. It was just Avengers with aliens is what it was. (laughs) Again, based on... And I'm not knocking it for that. (laughs) I love the movie, but I'm saying, like... There was no way they were going to fail. They already had succeeded with Avengers. Right. The the uh, <laughs> the blueprint was there, but the, yeah. the thing that the thing that was so fresh about it was again, I'm not seeing the the characters that have been in front of me all the time in all media. Like any time you get online or any time it's in the news or something like that, they don't talk about. Oh, now fucking Drax is gay. They're like, oh, now Superman's gay. It's always the mainstays that people are most concerned with. So it was very cool and very fresh to get characters that were. Oh, yeah. I loved Guardians of the Galaxy. I I know know you did. That third one. Yeah, I'm very excited and a little scared that this is going to be the end of Rocket. Uh, I think that's the big gut punch that they're hiding in this movie is that this is Rocket's finale. Right. Right. That's probably why the Guardians will disband. Yeah. Right. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> I'm calling it. Well, they they fucking I don't like it, but I think that is what's going to happen. And I'm not alone. They've written... All of you out there have been talking about this on the internet for months. <laughs> they've ridden this fucking Groot thing to Yeah. places we never knew it would go though. Well, and I think we're finally we're finally back to a version of the first movie's Groot. Right. Right? A full on no, I'm a big tree guy, and I'm really cool, but he seems like he's not as nice as the original Groot was, because the original Groot wasn't raised by these crazy people. Right. The second Groot was, 
So he's more akin to who they are now, which I think was a nice little way to evolve him into something different no, than what he initially could have been. Yeah, to create one. Well, he's seen fucking universe ending threats now, which you know yeah. he didn't see the first go around. Uh, I, no, he definitely did as the first go around. They're Flora Colossi. They're the oldest beings. Oh, in the yeah, universe. I guess that's, that's <laughs> They've true. watched Rise and Fall, man. But I, I'm talking him have personal experience with a Thanos or something like that. Yeah, the Flora Colossi protected the balance of the universe. So, They've definitely but, dealt with like universe but Groot, ending threats. Groot is Groot is a young one in in comparison to some of the other ones. Not the first Groot. Not the I, no, how the first Groot was like centuries old. Yeah, but centuries is a few hundred years. Well, I understand, but he's he's dealt with some despots. He's a Flora Colossi, okay. and for his lifetime, he was the last Flora Colossi. Fair enough. Now, they didn't really do that in the movies, but in the comics, yeah, like, no, that's who Groot is. He's, the Flora Colossi were the oldest beings in the universe. No, and that 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 part I understand, but I'm talking just where Groot's been since we've seen him. Because, so, the Flora Colossi, one of the things that they, that happens to them, the only reason he can say, I am Groot, is as they get older, their vocal cords, like, harden or something like that, and they lose the ability to speak altogether other than basically grunts and groans. Um, so... They start off when they're younger being able to speak, and then getting older, they're supposed to lose the ability to talk. I mean, the Flora Colossi don't talk like you or me. That's why right. when we hear one talk, it just goes, I am Groot. Right? Right. But eventually, that's not what it's saying. Eventually, they lose the ability to even say, I am Groot, based off of what I've No, yeah, but they, don't, they don't need that right. ability. Right. Flora Colossi communicate through... Um, Spores and and pheromone yeah. and stuff like that. They don't need to talk to each other, right? Sure, they're plants. <laughs> Although I did really like there was in the Guardians of the Galaxy video game that Square yeah. Enix did. There was a moment where they go to a planet that has these old plants called the. Uh, uh, it doesn't even matter what they're called. They're supposed to be very old and they're sentient, right? And they're like, well, we got to get into this cave. Is this plant going to move out of the way? And the one girl goes, well, maybe if you ask it nicely. And Groot, just realizing what's going on, just walks up to it, bashes his hands onto it, and just screams, I am Groot! (laughs) And it moves. And I remember playing that and Corey going, what just happened there? I was like, "Uh, the Flora Colossi are like first plants he they're, told it to get the fuck the out of the way they're the gods of plants <laughs> <laughs> and this is the last one. <laughs> oh my god yeah um, anyway okay so i told you i'd come back to the scott snyder thing sure did you so they just launched their own independent publishing thing did you see that i did that's fucking rad dude yeah uh i don't remember what the book was though they talked about a book in an interview recently yeah, it's gone. I lost it. But uh, yeah, Snyder's been Snyder's kind of been taking a back seat from the main mainstream yeah. stuff for a while. Like he's doing, doing more with he's doing more image, with image. Yeah. yeah, he just did. He's actually just in the process of doing a book with Francis Manipal. God, what a team up that was. Right. Uh, called Clear. That's actually pretty weird, but also quite interesting so far it's only going to be three issues and only two are out so far he's good at weird though man he is he, he does is. it well yeah he's also still doing noctera i believe which is also an image book Witches is getting an amazon adaptation which is fucking crazy really yes weird yeah i'm like how all the scott the book snyder didn't last shit, very long it didn't but it was fucking good i mean sure but like what are they gonna what how are they gonna tell the story if, beyond the scope? If, you know? if you're if you're looking if it's just a, a fucking short series, you're talking a you know, six episode I mean, maybe, series or yeah. something, that'd be that'd be legit as fuck, man. It'd be yeah, good. Amazon, just like any other company that produces television. No, they're gonna fuck if it up. If something is successful, they're gonna make more of it. Right. You know? Well, like they did with uh, lock and key. Like they basically finished the entire series in the first, you know, season, and then they're like, all right. Yeah, Season that was, two. That was Netflix, though. I know, I know. It was dirty. It was dirty what yeah. they did. Um, but yeah, I, I think it, I think it was Amazon that's picking that one up. Uh, okay. Forgive me if I'm mistaken, uh, but it should. I loved this series. I thought it was a kick-ass series. I would like to see fucking Birthright too, but I'll never get that. And it's not Scott Snyder, so it's not. There's. I was super gonna say, there's yet. a couple of things that I think would make for some good series. Uh, Moonshine. Oh, Moonshine would be badass. The werewolf story. Yep. Yeah. Uh, redneck. A vampire story. There's a few really good ones that I think, man, they should turn these into television. They really should. Sex criminals. 
No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you you think see like people hear that and they think what? Sex I know. Criminals. I know. It's actually a very beautiful story. It's a good series I about just... people trying to save a library. They're trying to save a library that's going to get closed and all the books are going to get destroyed. They're trying to save a library like this. And yeah, sex plays a part of it. <laughs> but they're trying to save a library. <laughs> Um, but so anyway, what else, right? Like I know me personally, I finished up the Resident Evil 4 remake or more. I was forced to finish up the Resident Evil 4 remake because God of War Ragnarok dropped new game plus. Oh God. Uh, so I spent, uh, more time in that game, carrying over all my stuff, maxing out all my armors and weapons and stuff. Yeah. Uh, and I just finished it last night. Actually, it's why I was a little late today. Because nice. I was up to like three in the morning. Jesus, dude. Because I was so close and I was just, it was like one and I was like, oh, I can't stop now. I'm, I'm in like in the end game here. I can't You're, stop. We're here, man. We're yeah, here. I got to continue. I got to finish this up. Uh, but now I think I got to play Jedi Fallen Order because Jedi Survivor comes out in like a week and a half. And then I'll have literally two weeks to finish Jedi Survivor before Tears of the Kingdom comes out. Well, I mean, your time will be perfect then. I don't know if I can do that. It depends on how big Jedi I Survivor believe is. in you. Yeah, well, it depends on how big <laughs> it is. The first one's pretty big. Like, it's got a lot of that Metroidvania, like, re, re, revisiting old locations with yeah. new abilities type of stuff going on. So if that stuff carries over in a Jedi Survivor in a bigger game, that could take some time, you know? Hells yeah, it could. So, but I mean, you've got 60 hours in the next two weeks. You can, I believe in look, you. There's a, but there's a very good chance that if Jedi Survivor is not finished on the day Tears of the Kingdom drops, I'm just not going to finish it. It'll Jedi be Survivor. abandoned. Yeah. I understand. <laughs> Until later. <laughs> It'll take I, me a couple months to get back to it. I just, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I'm so hyped for this game. I cannot wait to play I this know game. You are. I know you are. I just am so excited. So, my D&D group is getting back together. It's, it sounds like a fucking broken relationship when you say it like that. But <laughs> we're getting back together. I love it. Oh. <laughs> but uh, no, so Thursday we're getting uh, we're getting the group back together, and I'm 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 excited. There's like a cautious optimism here. So I had a couple of people that I wanted to play in it, but are like, yeah, I can't commit to every week or every other week or anything like that. So I'd sure. like to have like a stand-in spot. Um, not always the most fun thing to do as a DM and I'm DM in this go around. So I'm like, all right, that's, that's cool. No worries. Yeah. Um, but I have the group that I have is four people. I've got two people that want to rotate as stand-ins and, okay. uh, in, in our stories canon, because we're developing our own world here. Um, we have a, uh, schizophrenic barbarian named him who will him? be, yes. Who will be played by anybody that is just filling in? Oh, that's interesting. That's an interesting way to to explain why everything's always everything's so different. always different. Yeah, yeah. yeah, well, yeah sure. If if people see him in town, they're like, "Oh, that's him." Like I don't, him, who, who? Yeah, yeah him. him. Yeah, him. Don't, exactly. Don't know his name today. You're, you're, that's why we call him him. He's setting up an old who's on first routine exactly, there with exactly. his name being him. Um, <laughs> but I I was so. I got, I basically got where I want to take the story all mapped out and everything. And I'm very excited about that. And I, I won't say it on here just in case one of my players watches this. <laughs> <laughs> right. But Don't be spoiling things that they might not want to right, hear about. Yeah. Right. But I, I mapped out the first session and I was really stoked about it. And I was like, okay, this is going to be, this is going to be cool. And it's going to further the story. The thing that sucked is we ended on kind of a bad note. I think we've talked about it on the show before um, where the guy that was DMing, got upset because we made a uh, suck you into your own butthole arrow. Let's <laughs> and we used it on the big bad. I think we did talk about this. Yeah, we did. I'm we pretty did. sure we did. Yeah. <laughs> now that you mention it. Um, and uh, after, after like, because this will be our uh, third campaign in our little world that we're making here. Right. And I'm like, man, I want to switch play systems now. I don't want to do 5e anymore. Um, so you picked up pathfinder second edition for me and i'm very yeah. excited to uh start to read into this we're not gonna we're gonna do 5e for this you know this series but moving forward after this it's gonna be fucking pathfinder and i am sure. stoked I, again i i hope you're 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 uh 
understanding of the fact, though, that it is pretty 5e. I know. I know. Like, I know. in the way it's designed. I'm, I'm good with that. I, I, there's, a, there's an elegance in the simplicity of 5e that I really enjoy. Sure. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't want to go first edition Pathfinder, because it's a little more uh, numbers heavy. Yeah. And I don't. Well, it's, I don't it's, wanna, based, cause it's based on 3.5. Right. Yeah. I don't want to do that, and I don't want to do that to my players. No, yeah, I don't. I mean, now that I've seen a more streamlined version of it, I don't want to play first edition Pathfinder right. anymore. So. so that's why that's so enticing to me, and it's supposed to just scale a little better than 5e. Sure. And I know you're like, it's the same! But uh, Again, it's just mechanically, it's the same. And I'm good. I don't know how, I don't know how, uh, you know, different it is when it comes to what happens during leveling up and sure. what kind of choices you get to make, or or is there more emphasis on this or that? I don't know the ins and outs, but I know that like mechanically it has, you know, the advantage and disadvantage thing that oh, yeah. five E introduced where you're rolling two dice when you're when you have the advantage or disadvantage. So we actually have a house rule for that, and advantage and disadvantage are add three or minus three to your roll. Um, so we don't actually roll two dice for oh, it. Rolling two dice is the best, man. I know people like it, but we had it. So when, when we started, I just did it as plus or minus. And, uh, I gave the group an option. I was like, look, man, we're moving forward. We're going to do this one way. So I want you guys to pick. And they're like, we really like the plus three minus three. So we want to just do that. Right. So that's I just like rolling both my dice and I know taking the higher result on advantage. I know you result. do. And sometimes that could fuck you. Right. You know, I've rolled double ones. Like, oh, well, I critical, screwed. critical fail. Screwed. <laughs> but oh. I've also rolled double 20s. So Tara and I are going to do some. Uh, we're going to make some dice here soon. Make your own dice. Huh? Yes. I'm fucking stoked. Well, you, you better get that little cup of water so you can give them the water test, you know? Oh, yes, yes. The cup of water. Um, Do you know what the water test is? Yeah, to oh, see okay. if there's bubbles in it. Yeah, to see if the the, the die is balanced. Yeah, we're going to be doing resin dice. So oh, okay. uh, I'm fucking stoked about it, man. It's it's a ridiculous thing to be excited about. But she was like, I want to do some resin stuff. And I was like, let's do fucking dice. <laughs> and she's like, That's like immediately where your mind went. Yeah. Resin dice. Fun, funny enough, she was talking. She was talking about it for uh, my shaving brand, Wizard Supply. She's like, "Hey, I think moving forward we should do this as like a more boutique thing than what you've done so far." Sure. And I was like, "That's a great idea." She's like, "We should do stuff with resin." And I was like, "Oh my god!" She's like, "And we could make dice too that we could send out with some of your orders." I was like, "We could just do full sets of fucking dice, just make dice, yeah. yeah." And she's like, "What?" And I was like, "Yeah, that makes all the sense in the world." <laughs> and she's like, "We're talking about shaving." I'm like, "Dice need to shave." Jesus, <laughs> <laughs> you're ridiculous, man. I am, but god damn it, yeah, I love dice. Everybody does. I so I sent one of my players in to see you because he lives in Arnold. Um, it, it, when he was initially picking up his dice for D and D because it was his first time buying dice, he was brand new to D and D. I was like, "Yeah, I go here." I was like, "A uh, good friend of mine, Jason, works there. Um, he'll take good care of you." I'm like, I, "I recommend rolling out your dice." Jason doesn't believe in that, and nah. he goes, "He goes." I go up there and I'm, I asked the guy, and he knew it was you. <laughs> Because you knew I, it was me? Yeah, because I had described oh, you. Yeah. Um, he's like, I asked the guy, should I roll these out? And he's like, it doesn't matter. They're all the same. And I was like, yeah, that's Jason. I'm like, did he laugh? And he was like, yes. I was, I was like, what did it sound like? <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he was like, and I was like, did he have glasses, long hair, and a beard? Yes. I was like, that was definitely Jason. Did you love him? <laughs> no one loves me. Oh, shut up. No one loves me. Good Lord. Not in that capacity, because I, I dash your hopes, right? People say, oh, I should roll these dice. I'm like, why? <laughs> it's completely random probability. Like, why? So, what is that going to tell you? I'm going to roll these five D20s, and the two that roll the best, I'm going to buy. Why? Because the other three will never roll good like that? I no, will, they I, will. I always rolled them multiple times and then took the ones that did the best. <laughs> that has no bearing on how it's they're going to do. It's science and magic, Jason. It is not. Science and it's magic. It's called probability. <laughs> what if there's an air bubble in it? It's not balanced. Boom. Chessex had, does not sell dice that are not balanced. They have I come don't so far. That. Oh no, believe it. We've, I have I have a, busted out the cup of water just to show people. My first set of dice that were chess X 
John Perks bought for me. Look, I'm not saying they're the best. And I'm not they saying they don't have problems. They but balanced. what I am saying is I don't see unbalanced dice come from their company very often. Sure. And that less often is better than more often. Oh, of course it is. <laughs> of course it because is. Because some of those other companies, I have seen unbalanced dice frequently. Sure. And I'm not naming any names, but I will say ChessX has been in the game the longest. They have and, a quality product, yes. And they sell a quality product. They do. I'm not I'm not disputing that. Yeah. It's just they can't all be perfect. So again, it's all probability. Roll your shit. Probability. <laughs> if it rolls good, that doesn't mean it's never gonna roll bad. And if it rolls bad, that doesn't mean it's never gonna roll good. I have my my set of I have a set of dice, which I've taken from my collection. <laughs> <laughs> because these dice roll the best. No, everybody, they don't. Everybody out of the dice that I have. I'm not saying in the world, just out of what I have. And <laughs> promise you they don't, bud. And other people have witnessed this and they're like, hey, can I borrow that? I need to roll that one here. This is <laughs> this is a big deal. Nonsense. You're speaking nonsense. <laughs> speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. It's magic. Dice are magic. Nope. Everybody knows it. It's science. I science and magic are indistinguishable. Yep, sure. Why not? <laughs> We're at that point as a species. Yep, sure. Why not? Any sufficiently advanced technology must be magic. Have you seen how your phone works? Nobody understands how that fucker works. No, we do. We absolutely understand exactly how it works. <laughs> That's definitely magic. It's not magic. You ever pulled a lighter out it's of technology. your pocket? <laughs> Those shouldn't work. You can't hold fire in your pocket. You would die. Oh, of course. Sure. <laughs> Um, oh, but yeah, I think that's all the nerdy things I'm up to. Yeah, that's, that's I, uh, that's I am it. getting ready to start a game, the Zelda game I've been talking about forever, but uh, it's probably going to have to wait until, uh, next month. So, damn, yeah. I mean, I'm ready. I'm, I'm all I'm waiting on right now is miniatures. Cause a friend of mine has got a 3d printer and is making me four miniatures for the four champions. Cause Awesome. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, no, it's I mean, that's nice to have those. Perfect. You know? Yeah. No, uh, one of the conversations that I recently had with Tara was like, hey, we need to get a 3D printer. And she was like, do you even know how to use it? I was like, that doesn't matter. It's not hard. Yeah. I, here, I am not bashing Mike Brodor at all. He is a very, very fucking smart man. <laughs> <laughs> but why do I feel like there's a butt coming there is a, there is in? A, there is and a you are going to bash Mike Brodor. I'm not going to bash him. But he can 3D print things. Sure. So I know, and like, the computer is not his forte. <laughs> Again, so there's the bashing, right? It's there's not, the butt. It's not bashing. It's, if Mike Brodeur, the dumb guy, can do he's it, anybody the, can do he's it. He's not the dumb guy. That he's, was your implication there. No, I'm just throwing that out there. My, my implication If this guy there, can do it, anybody can do implication it. My implication there was computers aren't his strong suit, and if he can figure that out, I can do right. that. Right. Again, what I just said, if this guy can do it, anyone can do it. That's not, what you just not, said. Not the dumb guy, It doesn't guy, matter though. that you not jumble the up guy. the words. <laughs> You're still saying, if he can do it, anyone can. Bro, Dor is the salt of the earth, and everybody loves him. <laughs> and I don't like that you're implying that I'm implying that he's dumb. I don't then think don't dumb. imply it. I didn't imply that he was <laughs> dumb, just that he's not did. great with computers. <laughs> Somebody had to be not great with computers. He's good at everything. He's 40-something, 40 47 years old, doesn't look it. So, God no. damn it, he has to have something that he's not good at, that fuck. <laughs> and it's computers. I love you, Mike. We do. We do love you, Mike. <laughs> we don't think you're dumb. No, not at all. <laughs> Although Chris was implying it, so. <laughs> Guys, go to our website. <laughs> <laughs> You can follow all of our That was it. Media. Show's <laughs> over. Fuck this show. <laughs> I'm triggered. <laughs> um, go to entertainthegeeky.com. You can follow all of our social media stuffs there. There's, you know, buttons to click and links and whatnot. You can use the promo code. They're probably all around us. You can use the promo code geeky to get a free copy of Merle's Truck Stop in Maine, the world famous one page role playing game. Uh, do you have any parting words that you would like to leave these lovely folks with? Yes, and this is very important. Only take what you can handle and always know your dealer. <laughs> As always, stay geeky. <laughs>
You made me do that. That was incredible. You put me on the spot, and that was the only parting word I could think of. Uh, it's from dr- Mr. Show. Dr- dr- drugs. Drugs. It's from Mr. Show. Uh, Bert Kreischer said, hey, when, you're, when you take drugs and you're in college, only take half. See if you like it, and if you do, take the other half. <laughs> only take what you can handle and always know your dealer. That's too funny. <laughs> Words to live by. <laughs> All right. You got to say your thing here. Bonus content. <laughs> okay. Yes. So here's what, here's what we're going to do. Pull this shit's up. I, I'll pull it up on the TV. Okay. TV. We're going to TV it. TV's on wheels. That's, that's insane. This is a classroom, a place of learning. All right. So uh, should, I, should I set the scene here, what we're going to do here? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch. Uh, we talked about in a previous episode, if you're, your kind of person out there who's been following along with what we've been doing. We talked in a previous episode about a gameplay trailer uh, that they showed that Nintendo showed off for tears of the kingdom, the sequel to breath of the wild. Uh, And it looks goofy and fun and interesting. Uh, And I didn't think so soon after that, they would show off what they're calling the final trailer for the game. Uh, and it is the first trailer. I mean, we've been talking about this game for years and years now. This is the first time I think we finally understood what some of the plot of this game was going to be. And spoiler alert, we were right on the guesses that we made. All of us (laughs) nerds who've been speculating about this for months and months and months and years and years, we were right. Uh, and... It's I've never been more hyped for a video game after after watching this trailer. So I have seen the trailer. I have not. Chris has not seen the trailer. So we're going to watch the trailer for the first time and and we're going to gauge Chris's reaction here. So serene. It's fucking beautiful. Yeah, so serene. <clears throat> Look at all the islands. I, I can't, can't get over to, the sky islands, man. I can't wait to explore all that. It's going to be beautiful. Look, this little guy's just fighting. Yep. Just fighting. Getting after it. Look, this guy tending the tree. Tending it? He's cutting <laughs> that motherfucker down. Well, they, they, they tend the trees. There he is. Linkus. Old Linkus. I like his braided sandals there. With his <laughs> with his Anakin arm. Yeah. Woo. Yoshi. The world's so big. It's so big. There's just so much to do. That's how they know. Let's go to Castletown. Like, what? <laughs> Climbing a goddamn mountain? What is that? <laughs> Circle thing? This is uh, something's rising from the desert as the castle also rises. That's demise. I feel like that's demise. Oh, get her with your scary arm. That's clearly an underground. Look, what is that? Okay, hold on. So we got to pause for a second. Oh my god. This is a fucking sky ship. Yeah, airship. Yeah. You'd say airship, I'm I, assuming. I said sky. Because <laughs> I saw it in the sky. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. Oh my God. Okay. All it's right. It's nuts. Wingsuit. <laughs> Lacrosse. Oh, what is this? Zonai. I think that's a Zonai. Oh my God. The fucking elemental thing. Ugh. <sighs> Sonai. <laughs> Jesus. I know. <laughs> I 
Oh, that's incredible. Return to sender. Incredible. <laughs> More of this underground stuff. I can't wait to see. Look, he made a robot. <laughs> yeah, so we did that specifically. Guy made a robot. We specifically talked about crafting items and what, what you'll be able to build with the ultra right. hand ability. And clearly, that guy you can make robot. fucking robots. He built a mech. Oh my god. Full on Ganondorf. Oh, you get to fight alongside friends. Yes. Holy shit. We're not we're not done. Oh, Look at, the, look at the, that's Ganondorf on the wall, like this part of the this prophecy. It's like Egyptian, yeah. yes, ask text or scrolling or whatnot. It's part of the prophecy. It's less than a month. Five, it's, 12, it's less 23. Than a month away. That's fucking sick, dude. I've never been more hyped for a video game. That video game is going to be amazing. That, yeah. So here, oops. Whoa. Hello. Well, you're Mr. Awanuma's talking behind us here. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that game is going to be huge. Yeah. Like just the amount of shit that you can do in it. I, I know, I know I've talked about the Switch multiple times on the show and I talk about it to my friends and stuff like that. I do think that is a truly incredible device. The amount of shit that you can do in that game and what you're able to do on that tiny console is just fucking incredible. You get to build robots now in a yeah. Zelda game. Well, yeah, you also have to remember that Breath of the Wild was not developed for Switch. Right. Breath of the Wild was developed for Wii U and then ported to the Switch for as a launch title. Mm -hmm. So it's, it was not a game that was built to use the Switch's hardware, this is... Right. This is a game that is now fully taking advantage of what the Switch has Everything to offer. Everything that the platform has to yeah. offer, yes. Uh, and this is this is years into, into the platform also, so we know the ins and outs of it. Developers have really keyed into it. Oh, yeah, Nintendo AAA, they only develop for Nintendo. It's That's, not like they're developing for Sony or Microsoft, you know? It's going to be an incredible game. That looks Ugh. fucking wild. Did you man. see how jacked Ganondorf is? It's huge. He's jacked, man. Also, look, the guy I love, the guy that I talked about in the episode we just did, mm -hmm. or at least prior to that episode, I don't remember when we talked about that, but Zeltic, this dude on YouTube that I, I enjoy, that I really follow, yeah, he seems to think, and I'm not saying he's wrong, I just disagree. Uh, he seems to think that that thing we saw that I am clearly saying that's demise. He seems to think that's also Ganondorf, that that's like some kind of final form Super or something. Saiyan yeah. form of Ganondorf. I don't think so. I think this game is bringing back, bringing around full circle the elements that built the chronology of the Zelda world. Hylia, uh, um, demise, and introducing into it the lost culture of Hyrule, the Zonai, who've been living in the sky until Ganondorf is resurrected and breaks the cloud barrier, allowing the sky islands to not only be seen from the ground, but they start to move closer to the, 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 the planet's surface, right? I think the rising into the, the, the castle rising into the sky has everything to do with now we understand, oh, look, there are sky islands where we couldn't see them before. And those people are the Zona, and I think that's who that person we see. That crazy looking yeah, awesome like thing. That, yeah. That is some kind of other species. I think that's a Zona. I think the guy talking to Zelda is a Zona, or maybe even their king. Um, because his his little his, his crest little necklace or whatever. Yeah. thing, like that is very much Zona, right? You can look at the similarities between the ruins you find in the Breath of the Wild world and the the adornments on these people. There's also a shot in the trailer where we see a woman uh, 
who's dressed an awful lot like Zelda and kind of looks like Zelda, but her ears are a little pointier, mm -hmm. a little, little longer. Um, her hair is a little longer. She looks older. I think that's Hylia. Really? I think that's either the goddess Hylia or I also was thinking it could be a previous version of, of Zelda. Zelda. Yeah, that's like kind of where I was going with it. could be her mother, maybe. Yeah. They talked about her mother, but we never met her mother. And her mother would just be Zelda. Zelda. Yeah. Because all the daughters of the royal family are named Zelda. Right. So she would just be Zelda, you know? <laughs> I don't know why they always say Zelda's mother. I'm like, you can just call her Zelda, guys. We know her name is Zelda. Yeah, I think I think it's more so <laughs> about not confusing <laughs> those sure. playing. Because they're guess. like, are we talking about this lady or are we talking about the one that came before her? Her mother's name is Zelda. Right. <laughs> it's just Zelda. <laughs> All right, Zelda. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to need you to get in contact with Zelda <laughs> and then great Zelda. <laughs> but yeah, I, I just, I have no words, man. There are so many things in that trailer that are going on. Uh, compa the companions from the previous game, like uh, Sidon and, and, and Tulin, little Tulin, the little bird kid who is the bird guy from the first game, son, now like teenage right. or whatever, like flying and, and, and working with Link. It's insane. The tears of the kingdom, actual tears, you can see them all across the trailer. Really pay attention, right? Because Zelda is holding one in her hand. Mm -hmm. And when we see her in that wide shot, she's wearing it as a necklace. But uh, Riju also has one in the shot where we see her and Sidon. Sidon has one on his hand. When we see Ganondorf, he has one on, on his, his forehead, head. Yeah. There are supposed to be seven tiers of the kingdom, which implies to me that we could be getting a return to more traditional Zelda dungeons, right? Here's the seven things you need to find before you can take on the final boss. Get all your tiers to the kingdom. Right, get all your tiers of the kingdom. And I think there's going to be time travel involved because... There's one shot where he's standing in the throne room of Hyrule Castle and it's pristine again. It's like, that hasn't been pristine in a hundred years. Right, long time. Yeah, like you had to travel back. And when Zelda says, find me at the end of the trailer, she's sitting on an island and we can see the background of where she is. So that island not only is close to the ground, but in a recognizable spot in Hyrule. So it's like, find you why does he have to find you're right there what do you mean find me is he lost maybe she's lost in time mm. and link will have to time travel to help her similar to skyward sword he'll have to do what link does so all the time things walk, yes. all the things from skyward sword i think are coming back around full circle the That's goddess hylia demise sky islands all of it's coming back right I'm excited. I'm just very excited. They're wrapping it all up, like I said, also in the Zonai, who are very interesting, right? In the in the lore, the Zonai like took their whole society and just went to the sky because they didn't want to bend the knee to the king of Hyrule. Mm -hmm. So they just said, all right, we'll just leave. <laughs> they took Rock their it. whole society to the sky. We're going that way. Yeah. Bye. Also, when you look at their prophecy wall, because that's clearly a Zonai prophecy wall. Mm -hmm. Not only is it Ganondorf, which is not in the original prophecy. The original prophecy is about Calamity Ganon. Mm -hmm. But their prophecy looks like the original prophecy in the way that the characters are designed. So I wonder if the Sheikah and the Zonai were once one tribe? Maybe. Or maybe uh, has history been rewritten at all? No, I think that we just, because the Zonai left with their part of the prophecy, mm -hmm. we just didn't know that the prophecy no, went No, we didn't on. have the full thing. Right, we I didn't see you. the full picture. We were only seeing the picture that the Sheikah had, yeah. which was the return and rise of Calamity Ganon. We didn't get to see the the, the part of the prophecy that the, the Zonai have, which was about Calamity Ganon's fall leading to Ganondorf's resurrection. So what's funny is talking about this now, I'm like, okay, I I decided the other day that I was like, man, I'm going to take some time away from Overwatch because I'm not really having fun with it right now. Play Breath of the Wild. That's exactly what I was going to do. <laughs> I was like, man, if I'm going to if I'm going to sit down and game, I guess I'm just going to be playing Breath of the Wild so that I can it's get so through good. that and be ready for uh, Tears of the Kingdom. And Tears of the Kingdom looks better. And I'm going to tell you, that's somebody who when I got my Nintendo Switch, it was a Christmas gift from Corey. Yeah. And she won Christmas that year. We we always have this thing where we like I'll I'll get a gift that I'm just like this is the best gift anyone's gonna get this year. I win this year, but 
I and I thought I had won that year until I opened up a Nintendo Switch. I was like, damn, you win. That's the best <laughs> gift. But you are a saint. I bought Breath of the Wild that day. Yeah. And 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 started playing it. And I'm not even kidding you, 10 minutes into the game, I, I turned, I had a tear in my eye. And I'm not exaggerating. I literally had it because it's beautiful. It's such a it thing is. that I never could have expected Zelda would become. And I and I, I said, babe. I am never going to get tired of this, ever. I still play A Link to the Past from Super Nintendo. Right. I am never going to get tired of this, ever, and I never have. And Tears of the Kingdom looks to just build upon what made that so special. That's amazing. Ugh. This, this series has my heart, man. Zelda is something that's ingrained in me from childhood. It's, it's so funny because being on the show, we talk about... So Nintendo is like the bastard child of consoles, uh, in uh, uh, in in a strange way, strongly in, in a strange way. Here here's here's my my supporting argument for that, and you can you can debate it further from here. All the other consoles, what they're doing is they're trying to make just the most powerful machine to get the most you know most that they can out of graphics, out of frame okay, rates, and all that. Um, not that titles are any worse or better or anything like that. Yeah, I see where you're going, with but. This. Game designers then want to use these platforms because of the power that the machine itself possesses. It's so crazy that on the the least powerful one out of all of them that we're getting titles like this, and they're exclusives. Yeah, like, Nintendo has proven time and time again that it's not about the presentation. It's about the gameplay. Oh, 100%. Can you innovate? Can you create something? Because they don't... They're their formulas are very simple. But they work, man. But Every they work fucking so time. well, and they evolve it just enough to make it new. Right. Right? Super Mario Odyssey is just like any other Super Mario 3D game. Well, with the exception of Super Mario Sunshine, because that game was bonkers. But Super Mario Odyssey is just like any other, but adding in that one little additional thing where you can throw your hat at things in the world and take control of them. Mm hmm changes everything right and, and it's fun it's a simple concept it's simple design but it's fun and that's what nintendo does best they do so much with so little right whereas well, the other consoles they do so little with so much right and that's that's i guess that's what i was kind of alluding to yeah. with this like wow wow yeah, and I'm not saying everything. They're right, not shit or anything are, like there that. There are great AAA yes. titles like Ab God of War Ragnarok Absolutely. that I just went through, like Horizon. Last of know, Us. We just, Last you know, of Us. There's yeah. a bunch of really great stuff out there, but Nintendo it's just, does so much with so little. They really do. And they, here, outside of like, you're talking Nintendo Super, Nintendo 64, I, I feel like was the, okay. That was the leap forward. Though. That was that was, a, that was, was a at a time huge... when 3D gaming became right. common. And when it was it was nuts. Yeah. It was fucking nuts. Sixty four bits. It was amazing. It was absolutely insane. After that, um, your Xbox, your PS 2s PS threes. That was that was the shit. Yeah. Uh, and no doubt. Nintendo was kind of in this weird spot. They had the Wii, the Wii U. The Wii was amazing, but it wasn't. Don't forget about the little box that could. The oh Game yeah, the Cube. GameCube GameCube was incredible. You have one of them. I know. I love this room. You know something. what's funny? That's probably my all time favorite console is GameCube. I don't see it right now, but it's, you... it's somewhere over yeah, there it is. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah, you have one of them. Yeah, no, you that's have an original Nintendo sitting right there beside me. I know. <laughs> so I got that when I was five or six years old too. That's what I'm saying. I, I agree with what you're saying, right? They it doesn't seem like they're on par with what no, but what your PlayStation or your Xbox is again. Fuck, man. But what they do innovates in a way. Look, Breath of the Wild set the standard for what every open world game after it was and became. Of course. It definitely absolutely changed how we look at open world games. And I think as as Nintendo is that little console that could, right, has been innovating gaming all our lives. Oh, for sure. That doesn't mean... How, how do you... I guess my thing is, how genius are these developers and stuff that are doing that? Because there's a purposeful restriction that they're placing on themselves by working in the space that they they're are. Working with hardware that's not as powerful. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's literally... So what's inside the Switch is a Tegra... It's a Tegra 1 or Tegra 2 chipset, which is a cell phone processor. Yeah. That's it. Right. Um, I think they upgraded it slightly with the newer version of the yeah, Switch. Yeah, like OLED version. Yeah, but better it's... Better screen and better lighting effects. It's and, not 
a powerhouse. It's not no. running fucking 32 gigs of RAM or whatever a PS5 is. No. And these purposeful restrictions that they place on themselves and still being able to turn out something as expansive as that with such a just vast and amazing story. It's just like, dude, you guys are incredible. Yeah. Like fucking incredible. Yeah. I can't wait. I haven't been this hyped for a game in a long time. I, mean, I cannot wait to play this game. 